Let's start talking about sandbagging a little bit. Here we go. Yes. We all know what that is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, when you have a conversation with somebody before you play a round of golf. Sure. And due to the words that were exchanged by you and said person, mm -hmm. your expectation of their level of golf is at something. Then all of a sudden, that is not the case at all. They were lying. Nay, they were sandbagging. Oh. Okay. Joining us now is the most handsome sandbagger I've ever seen. He has an album coming out on May 12th. It's going to be a banger. Hell yeah. Obviously, you can go on Spotify and be one of the hundreds of millions of people that have streamed this handsome Cowboys songs. Ladies and gentlemen, Parker McCall. Yeah! yeah. What's up, dude? How we doing? Good to see you. Hey, where'd you get that hat? Did you, uh, did you go to a golf tournament that was, uh, that was down there in uh, Georgia? Uh, I played my own golf tournament uh, down at a little club in Georgia recently. So, oh, really? Nice. I did, and I, I and I did not uh, I did not perform very well, but I had a, had a great time. Yeah, I did. There it is. You heard it. Oh. Yep. You heard what just happened. Sand right there? again. I got a chance to play golf with you at a very nice course down there in Georgia as well. And you were coming fresh out of the rodeo in Houston. Okay, fresh in, fresh out of the rodeo, Houston. You had no hours of sleep. You were celebrating the whole thing, right into the lunch we were having before we went out to golf at this sure. place, and the conversation was just like, "Oh, I'm shit," you know. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be lucky to get off a tee box. Oh, okay. You know that type of shit. And he's got zero hours of sleep. Incredibly handsome. Looks terrible. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Like this guy's been through. Bags. It. This guy's been through it. Obviously, like the last 13 hours or so. First hole I'm on this guy. We did a uh, it was a par three thing we did. First hole I'm watching, almost hits a fucking hole in one. Come on, oh, hits the thing. Next hole, same thing. Ridiculous. Next hole, same thing. Next hole, same thing. <laughs> Next hole, same thing. Next hole, same thing. Next hole, same thing. Next hole, same thing. <laughs> Next hole, same thing. It was unbelievable. No sleep. The worst this guy's ever gonna be was the best golfer on the golf course out of nowhere. And he said, "My dad ain't gonna believe this." That's what you said. That you're a sandbagger. You have the same game. You have the same plan every time you play with everybody. Or did I just happen to see the greatest Parker McCollum performance on a golf course ever? You quite literally saw the greatest I've ever hit the ball in my entire life. God, you're um, so good. That would be so much it fun. It just so happened to ha uh, be right after I told you that I'm not a good golfer, uh, which I'm really not. Uh, I think I shot 90 both days at the little club down in Georgia yesterday and, and Monday. Um, had a couple birdies. I had some good holes, but I had some really – bad holes. Are you a sports guy? Uh, obviously, you're athletic. I saw your movement uh, with the golf club. You rode a horse mm -hmm. out of the rodeo. I, st I still think you should ride a horse onto every stage that you're on yep. and off of every stage that you're on because you can ride a horse and I can't. That'd be a cool thing that you would do, but I assume in the country world it's different. Um, you're an athlete. I assume you're a pretty athletic human being. How'd you get into singing? Uh, when I found out that I wasn't as good of an athlete as I wanted to be, um, and I realized I could play guitar and sing better than all my f buddies on the football team, I decided that that was the route for me. What age? Uh, I was probably sophomore in high school, 15, 16 years old. Were you supposed to be in like your family in music? How'd you get into music? You just picked up a guitar one day? Now my older brother's a really good songwriter. He'd been doing it since he was a little kid. Uh, I really just wanted to do what my big brother was doing. Had he been ice skating, I would probably be ice skating there today. Uh -huh. Man, happy or not in the NHL, guy got stabbed in the face last night, 75 stitches. Mm -hmm. That's real deal. Happened last night, NHL. I'm happy that face is singing <laughs> and not getting stabbed by hockey skates. Uh, so you go to Nashville. You have to out of Texas. You go to Houston. You go to Nashville. And then you kind of get put into, like, the country music. I don't want to say machine, but, like, into the factory over there? Is that something that's real or is that kind of blown out of proportion? Uh, no, it's, it's very real. I was lucky though. I put out my first two albums as a solo artist on my own label. Um, so I was selling a bunch of tickets. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. I was selling, I was selling much tickets and had a, you know, my own tour bus and, and my band was on salary all this stuff before I ever signed a record deal. So when I signed my deal, the ball was kind of in my court and uh, I basically told them the only thing that I really cared about was having creative control I wanted to do it how I do it and, and didn't want anything to change. And um, shout out Universal Records. They've kept their word on that 100% and, and they still uh, allow me to run the show. Well, congrats to you. Not a lot of people are entrepreneurs these days or hustlers, which is what you would have to be to be able to put yourself in the position that you're in to tell Universal fucking records, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to do this. Okay. Probably. All right, I'm going to wear these two chains. Mm -hmm. All right. 
I'm a gold chain cowboy. I'm gonna wear really cool hats. Of course. I'm gonna wear my Lucchese boots. Okay, right. Lucchese boots. I'm gonna wear those things. But you gotta, to put yourself in that position is not easy. Okay, that is not an easy thing to do. So congrats on that. Having a band on salary, a lot of pressure. Congrats on that. Keeping the creative freedom. Congrats on that. How come you don't make a song for, will you make a song for me? Can, everything, you know what I mean? And I guess, you know, it's, uh, obviously I have a beautiful bride. Mm -hmm. I got a baby on the way. That's mm -hmm. right. Sure. I certainly love love, don't I? Who does? Yeah. Big fan. Hey, of we, you do. we fucking love love. That's your avenue, though, huh? You are the love god. It feels like we we were listening to all your songs this morning to kind of refresh everybody. It's like this guy mm -hmm. is a heartthrob. Yes, he is. Is Big that guy. is that the is that on purpose or no? It's just natural how your brain works. Uh, you know, just always my favorite songs in country music growing up were sad love songs about everything going terribly wrong and. Uh, now I'm I am married as well. I have a, a wonderful wife, and uh, um, I still sit around most of the time when I'm playing guitar, trying to write songs like that. So it's it's kind of like uh, sometimes I can turn it on and I can go there and write those songs, and sometimes I try to and I fail miserably. So well, you want to just make us one one time? That's just yeah. like I got fucked up last night. You know, you do a lot Hell of drinking yeah. songs. You got a lot of drinking songs. You know, I got I got some drinking songs. I got a couple on this new record coming out too. But you know, Pat, the only time that we've ever hung out, I was fucked up. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we had a pretty good time that night. Hey, I don't think you, I don't know what you expected going in there. I I didn't know what to expect going in there. I don't I don't know if that's what I should have expected what ended up happening. But man, we had a good time out there, Parker. Yeah, I have uh, well, it, my story about you at dinner at that place is, is one of my favorite stories. And I will tell it forever and ever and ever any chance that I get. What is it? Uh, you know, I was you, at this nice club down in Georgia. You, you have to dress very nice for dinner. And, uh, and uh, Pat here forgot, I think, his entire suitcase. So he brought no clothes for dinner. True. Uh, when when Mr. Manning had sent us a very specific itinerary and instruction on what to bring and what to wear, Pat shows up with absolutely nothing. That happened, yeah. And uh, but but what he did bring was a massive bag of some fun gummies, for lack of a better term. And he had them in his arm. You can see he had them in his arm like this, walking around the dinner room, just offering at this nice club in Georgia, passing them out. And he gave me a couple. Uh, that I thought were, you know, some low dose. They were high dose. I should have asked. That's my fault. Not my first rodeo. And uh, and, and it, it got the best of me. I lost that battle miserably. And I thought I was going to die later that night. But I didn't. Still here. Shout out, Pat. Here, here. Still here. Here, here. Sure. Hey, you, you pulled it off well, you know, because you did tell me the next morning we had a conversation about what had happened. And he goes, what was that, dude? You know, give me one of those. I was like, Good time. We had a good time. It was a great night. You pulled it off. You were put into a situation that I don't know if I would have been able to do uh, that you did. I seen this guy grab guitar in living room, okay, of okay. place, singing exactly how it sounds like on Spotify. Mm -hmm. So you listen to him sing. There's a lot of effort, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of. Yeah. It is a. Hey, you're a show. You are a. Your voice is a grand one, right? Is that the proper? I don't know music well enough. How is that? How it should be described? They're loud. Yeah, this guy's fucking loud. Okay? <laughs> Takes a lot of effort. It was it was really well done though. On two hours of sleep, while on cloud fifty five, I was right there with you though. So you know, if I had to sing, it wouldn't sound anywhere near as good as yours. But I would have battled for you. And ever since that moment, I was like, all right, Parker McCollum, cool dude. I think I even told the boys oh, yeah. once mm -hmm. I got back to my room where there was maybe a phone I was allowed to use. I said, hey boys, Parker McCollum. Cool fucking guy. Let's talk about this album coming out, May 12th. Hey, never enough. Is that never enough good times? Never enough edibles? What? Never what? enough whiskey? What? Never enough beats to nod your head to? What? Never enough like, oh, I'm not enough. What, what do we got coming in? And did you write this song? And what's the process to get to a new album, or this album? And what's the process to get here? Uh, I wrote all the songs but one. Um, it's my first time cutting an outside song in... Uh, two or I think I, I didn't have an outside song on my last record, um, so I I chose to do one. This record wrote all the other songs. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a crazy process when you tour as much as I do. You're you're kind of just sitting in studio time. You know, where you you know here and there and kind of piecing things together. Um, 
but this record, I mean, I think it's the best collection of songs I've put together so far in my career, but um, it's uh, the, the never enough thing kind of kind of comes from everything you mentioned and then everything you didn't mention. Uh, kind of feel like you never can work enough, you know, no matter how much you do, it's never enough. You climb one mountain, you know, that you thought you would never be able to climb and, and all of a sudden you're at the top of it and, and the only thing you do is is look up at the next mountain that you want to climb and, and it seems like, huh. you know, no matter what it is, material things or accolades or awards or whatever, you always want more and it's never enough. I see a lot of them hanging behind you. I assume another one's coming. I love hearing that you've only taken one song from somebody else. What do you got to do? You got to have a lot of trust in that human? You got to like that human? Why is it that you just, because of your creative control, I guess, you just kind of want your voice to be heard? Because isn't it very normal in country music? Because what was that song? Nick, you remember, I was listening to it. It was Kenny Chesney. It was about life, obviously. It was a good one. Trip Around the Sun? Yeah, Trip Around the Sun might have been what it was. And I was watching an award show, and that song won like an award. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm happy it did. Go, Kenny. That's a good song. And Kenny gets up, looks like he's still sitting, but he gets up. Oof. He starts walking his way to the stage or whatever. And then they're like, this song was written by, and they had 70 fucking people on it. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, whose story was I listening to? Mm -hmm. Who? I wanted, I didn't know whose brain I wanted to like say thank you to for like how great it was. Feels like that's how your business operates. You do not operate that way. Uh, I, I write, I write a lot of songs with my friends. Um, Co-writing is, is something I didn't do for a long time. I had never really done it until I, I signed my record deal, and, and uh, I was kind of jaded towards it for a while. But now I really enjoy it, just because now I just hang out with the best songwriters in the world that have written some of my favorite songs in the history of country music, and they come over to my house and, and want to write songs with me. It's, it's kind of cool, and, and it gets me excited about it. But um, the outside song, man, it's, think, it's called Things I Never Told You, and, and my buddy Taylor Phillips texted it to me one day. And I listened to it one time, and, and there's a line in it that said I had a Playboy stashed in a Johnny Cash LP sleeve in my room. <laughs> and that was the line I said, damn, I wish I would have written that. I'm going to sing the shit out of that song. I love that. I love the little piecing it together. I also like the fact that you said, yeah, now the greatest songwriters on the world just come to my house. What are you guys doing? Smoking dope? We got uh, instrumentals in the back. We got a bunch of guitars. We got whiskey. How, how does one of those writing sessions go, and how long are they? Uh, they can be two hours. They can be all day. Um, but usually I'm the only one that's probably smoking something. Um, uh, not always. Most of the time that's the case. Um, but you know, some people, everybody kind of has their vice. Uh, everybody, you know, they, they usually, you know, supply your, your own vice, whatever, whatever you need to write songs, you're, you're kind of expected to bring it. And then, uh, uh if you don't, there's probably some of whatever you want already there. Ty Schmidt has a question for you, Parker. Yeah, Parker, uh, I think I read that George Strait was uh, one of, like, your big inspirations growing up. And obviously, like, when you're going to perform in concert, everyone's there to hear your music and, and all that kind of stuff. But it seems like, you know, the more concerts I go to, like, the things that people really remember are the covers. How do you choose, uh, like, what covers you're going to do, especially when you're talking about how you want so much creative control? Like, I assume that's kind of difficult, kind of landed. And, you know, when you have an unbelievable voice, I assume you're just like, well, fuck, I can, I can cover any of these songs. Like, how do you go about that process and decide which covers you're actually going to sing? Uh, we don't do any covers. Wow. What? We have before. Uh, live shows? Before. Yeah, well, live shows? Yeah, live shows, no covers right now on this Damn. on this tour. Um, and I don't think, you know, we, we would do like uh, Dwight Yoakam's version of Suspicious Minds last year on tour. And uh, the kids just did not know it. And then they would message me after the show saying, man, I love your new song, Suspicious Minds. But I do, that's an Elvis song that Dwight Yoakam covered and we do his verse. So it just didn't connect. So um, they, they really, it's every now and then we'll throw one in there, but it's super rare for us. I watch The Voice or any of these things. You got to pick the right song. You do. That's right. Hey, song selection is a big fucking deal, Parker. Play the crowd. Okay. It's a big deal. What's uh? What, what are you doing? You doing amphitheaters, arenas? What are we? Uh, where? Where? Where are we right now in the career? Because we looked at streaming numbers. Mm -hmm. Hilarious. Uh, Absurd. Hilarious. And how many shows a year? Yeah. Uh. Well, I played about 130 last year. I'll only do about 95 this year. Oh, um, right. Which is. Only. You know, significantly less for me. Um, but it's really, I mean, that's the American dream, right? Work less, make more money. Um, yes. Wow. And uh, 
Um, but the, the we do we do quite a few arenas. Um, we do some big amphitheaters. We got a show in Dallas coming up that's that'll sell out twenty thousand people amphitheater. Oh, you're doing a fucking stadium. Yeah, yeah, we do. We'll do. Well, those are with Wallen. The stadium shows are are, are opening up for Wallen. So, hey, good move. Hey, you like you guys get along? You and uh, Morgan. He seems to be on top of the world. He's the guy right now in the country music world. Yeah, he's he's the guy. I don't know if anybody will ever do what he's doing again. Why? Um, it's kind of unprecedented. What? Uh, I just uh, I don't even know if you. I mean, the 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 numbers and the you know you. To be 30 years old, I think he's 29 or 30 and selling out two nights at MetLife Stadium and, you know, um, whatever the Washington football team's called now, their stadium, we're playing there with him and we're playing Wrigley Field with them, we're playing Fenway Park with them, oh. and they'll all sell out 40, 50,000 people. So. They're the commanders. Okay. The commanders, <laughs> yes. Wake up. You're a big NFL guy, right, aren't you? A big NFL guy. Loves the Texans. Yeah, really? Love. Loves the Texans. That sucks. Number two overall pick, Parker. Okay. Here we go. We're going to get better yeah, you know, this year. Whoa. If I had to guess, whoever we draft with that second pick uh, probably won't have a great career, and whoever goes first <laughs> and third will probably be Hall of Famers. So, <laughs> um, uh, absolutely miserable. That's fantastic. Tony has a question for you. Parker, I, I feel like we're sitting on a big money idea. We open up a bar in Nashville. Boom. We call it hell of a year so people could stumble out. They said we had hell of a year in there. Boom. Spent a year in hell of a year last night. All yeah. the artists are doing doing it. What do you think? You got if, if people would really spend an entire year in there, I would say there's no way it could fail. Um, so just mathematically thinking off the top of my head, if you're in there for a year, you're going to have to pay for a lot more stuff than just an exactly. evening. Agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's pretty genius, but um, – you know, I, I live in, uh, I'm actually uh, leaving Nashville this weekend and uh, for I have a house here in South in Texas. I'm moving back to my house in Texas full time. So, congrats. That's the goal, right? Come to Nashville. That's it's like goal. college, university, do your thing. Boom, we're moving back to Texas. Good for you. Hell yeah. Congratulations. Sure. We're going to miss you in Nashville, though. We're, we we're opening a bar. Hell of a, <laughs> hell of a <laughs> month. <laughs> hell of a month. Just need them for, <laughs> just need them for one month. Uh, Connor has a question for you, Parker. Yeah, Parker, obviously yeah. it has been a hell of a year for you. And uh, with the new album coming out, Never Enough, you know, it's good to know that you ain't going nowhere. But with all the traveling and touring that you do, is it hard for loved ones to get a handle on you? You know, because I assume there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, trying to be loved by you and your pretty heart because in the end you're really just kind of living like a cowboy well done um, <laughs> yeah, usually, anytime i get hounded in the airport or anywhere or anywhere that's that's usually how they they approach me is by saying all my song titles so that's spot on I hey mark um, <laughs> well done. Yeah. Uh, but man the the travel thing gets uh it, it gets it kind of a grind you know and, and at the same time you're so used to it i mean i'm sure pat understands that you through an NFL season, I mean, you you wow. see your house for like three hours um, for those 16, 17, 18 weeks. Um, and uh, it's kind of the same way for me, but it's just, you know, 47, 48 weeks out of the year. Um, you know, you come home on Sunday. You might come home on Sunday, but you're leaving on Wednesday night immediately. Um, and there's actually a lot of similarities. I always make quite a few comparisons between professional sports and the music business. There's, it's just, I mean, you're in there. If you're playing a professional sport, you're in the entertainment industry. Bar none. I mean, you 100% are. And uh, you have to perform and you got to be on and there's no excuses. And um, how long you know, do you play? High level how, how long do you play for? Uh, we usually do not, uh, about an hour and a half. Nice. What do you do? What, uh, I'm not giving it away, I guess. Yeah, go see a show. I was yeah, I was gonna say, well, what, what's the order? You know, what's the order in which we do? Because there, there's a strategy. I assume you've been on the road a long time grinding. You got early, you got to play a banger, right? Don't you get to get them there? And then come out with a banger, come out with a banger heavy, banger heavy, banger heavy. And then you got to leave a couple in the chamber, right, for the end oh, of yeah. the night. So, right, isn't that a balance? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been really lucky. I've had um, uh, a few number ones now, and then, but I've had songs that you know. Or, or higher streamed and more popular than my number ones. So we have quite a few hits in our, in our uh, set. So it's actually, nowadays it's, it's, it's pretty nice. You can kind of, you can throw some deep cuts in there every now and then, but it's kind of nice to just play hit and then another hit and then another hit. What? And then another. What? Did you murder that deer behind you or no? 
I murdered that deer. I did it with my bow and arrow. Oh, did you have the? Did we have camo on? Did we have face paint on? Were we hanging uh, out a blind? I don't know. You can watch the hunt on YouTube, actually. Oh, um, you're a content creator. I, you're I, you're a uh, internet hunter. No, no. Uh, I, I that was. I think I've done it twice. Uh, but the uh, I'm about to sign a, a deal with a bow company here in a few weeks, and uh, okay. I'll have to do some a couple hunts a year on camera. So. Congrats, dude. Let's go. Thank you. Lucchese Boots, a bow company, mm -hmm. moving back to Texas. That's right. Why? Jeez, you're going to be the face of fucking Texas. You're going to be Texas's finest. Yeah. yeah. Do you do fishing as well or just hunting? I love to fish. I don't, uh, I don't have the time to fish throughout the year. I actually block off all of the month of November and, and three weeks in December just to hunt. Um, but it's like the prime time fishing throughout the year, I'm usually typically on the road, so I don't get to fish as much as I'd like. Pac-Man Jones has a question for you. Barker, I got a lot of big friends down there. Any big features on this new album that's coming out? Uh, no features on my record. I did just do a song with Diplo that's supposed yes. to be coming out. Oh, oh, uh, shit. EDM. Yeah, Fucking Diplo, soon. dude? Jeez. And then uh, I just did a song um, with a young girl who's going crazy, blowing up on TikTok and stuff right now. And she sent me this song Dylan. about Texas that, uh, and asked me to sing on it. And um, I was kind of blown away at how good the song was. And so I was out in El Paso, had some Luke Casey meetings out there last week. And then we, we played that arena out there. And um, and so she, well, I guess what I did originally, she didn't like. She's like, well, you redo it. So I went to a Whoa. studio out there in El Paso and recut it. And um I don't know. Maybe she hates it. Maybe she loves it. But I think I think oh. we'll see the light of day. Hold on. What type of what genre of music? Uh, she's like a like a pop rapper singer. Incredibly talented. Bad Phenomenal man. voice. Uh, she's really young. She's like basically still a kid. Um, but she's going crazy on the internet right now, and and so so talented. Um, so I had never met her. Her label reached out to my label said, you know, with Parker want to be on this song and I listened to the song and loved it. So what about Diplo? You and him just sandbagging out there, just having a good time and he was like, oh, I got this cool beat. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh I can sing shit over that. Mm -hmm. What is, is it a techno song? When are we gonna hear that? No, it's it's not really. It's uh it sounds like if you took one of my songs and put Diplo's spin on it. Great. Okay. Uh, but I thought it was gonna be not good at all, but it actually turned out. I was I was really surprised at how how well it turned out. And so uh, he's playing stagecoach, and I'm playing stagecoach. I think on the same day in a couple weeks. So there's some talk about us debuting the song at stagecoach. I haven't had any confirmation. Breaking news! Oh. Breaking news! Diplo Barker McCall and debuting a song stagecoach. Couple Let's weeks. Go. No Let's confirmation go. on that here on the Pat Max. Breaking show. news! Yep, <laughs> confirmed. It's Diplo happening. and Parker are gonna be out in the middle of a desert mm -hmm. in California. And they are going to debut a new song. That's going to be awesome. Hell Thank yeah. you for that piece of information there, Bart. Let's go. Absolutely. We're excited to hear that. Uh, we're pumped to hear that. I'm thankful you stopped by to chat with us, brother. I hope I can see you again sometime. 48 weeks on the road. That's like WWE. Yeah. yeah. You always compare like professional athletics. You should think about WWE. It seems like that's what you're doing, but you're performing for 90 minutes. That's a lot. Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Most of the time. Sometimes Sunday. Sometimes Wednesday. You're a grinder, buddy. Congrats on all the success. Can't wait to hear Never Enough. Thank you. It's been a, been a lifelong dream of mine to be on Pat McAfee's show, so I'm glad I checked out my bucket list. All right, fuck off, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Parker McCall. I'm, that was so genuine. No, 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 no. It no, didn't no, sound man. like it. No, we appreciate you, man. You're welcome back anytime. We can't wait for May 12th. We got a countdown, actually. Hell yeah. yeah. May 12th. It's right yeah, over here in the, the office. Clock. Yep. Never Enough coming out. Never Enough. Never yeah. enough mountains to climb. That's right. Mm -hmm. Never enough whiskey to drink. What? Right. Never enough love, I think. <laughs> is that what it is? Did we just guess it? No spoiler. That's pretty close. Okay. How many singles are coming off of this album, you think? Do you have to prepare for that? Like, which one are you releasing all by themselves? Or do you know that before you release it? No, I have no idea. I let the label decide what they want singles to be. So I got to sing them regardless. True. Ladies and gentlemen, Parker McCall. Yeah. He's a Texans fan. He's miserable. Yeah, that yeah. sucks.